It was a warm summer night, and the sun was almost set. So in some directions, visibility was very poor. I knew the street I was on at the moment very well, so I knew there were road narrows coming up. What I didn't know was that there was a car coming at me from the opposite direction, at high speed, headlights off. I simply didn't see them because of the sun blocking my eyesight. We almost had a top speed frontal collision there, and being on a moped, I would have suffered from heavy injuries after that kind of accident. I managed to dodge the car at the very last moment, and didn't hesitate a second to throw the good old middle finger at them for not turning on their headlights in these weather conditions. I still remember the car, it's a bright blue Fiat Punto with black rims. So a few days later, I spotted the exact same car waiting at a yield sign for me and some other vehicles to pass. I was on my way back to the pizza place and had to make a left into the same street they were in. Time for me to mess around for a bit. Extremely slowly, I passed the front end of their car. As I passed the driver's window, I noticed it was rolled down a bit, so I had a peek inside and saw the biggest, most terrifying looking gym rat wearing the douchiest sunglasses ever. Next to him, not surprisingly, was a beautiful blonde girl. So the guy immediately started swearing and calling me out and I was like, bitch, come at me. I heard myself saying that and instantly regretted it because this was not a guy I wanted to get in a fight with. I'm a pretty tall guy, but this dude, hell no. So I got away from that car as fast as I could. But a few moments later, I kid you not, that blue Fiat appeared in my mirror and the guy was now chasing me. I was driving as fast as I could, 50 kilometers an hour, but him being in a car, he could easily top that. There was a roundabout coming up, which I knew I could take on easily while going full throttle. The car, of course, couldn't. So that slowed him down for a bit, but it wasn't enough. The street was straight and clear, so it only took the guy a matter of seconds to get to my back end. He was now tailgating me, and I was scared as heck. This wasn't enough for him, and he decided to drive right next to me. The passenger window rolled down, shouting at me to stop so we could talk. Well, I was not going to do that. He was closing in on me, the girl looking at me the whole time, and our cars were almost touching sides. Suddenly, I saw a golden opportunity, a side street on my right. I yanked the brake of the rear tire and power slid myself into that street. It wasn't my intention to lock the rear wheel, but I can assure you it looked cool. But this wasn't the end. The guy saw it coming and slammed the brakes too. He was now right behind me again. Suddenly, I saw a narrow alley on the left. I did a hard left into it, and the blue Fiat knew he wouldn't fit. I drove back to the pizza place as fast as I could. Sometimes I still spot that bright blue Fiat. I hide or quickly turn into another street to avoid it as much as I can. I used to work at a pizza hut in a pretty rough area of Tucson, with lots of trailer parks, run-down apartments, and shabby duplexes. Most people were on drugs and welfare, so tips were very rare. One evening, a man ordered a large meat lover's pizza with extra sausage and another driver took his delivery. Before the driver even returned, the man called the store to complain that his pizza was so spicy it was inedible, and he wanted a new one. While it was likely impossible that the pizza was actually spicy, and this guy probably just wanted free food, we obliged and handed the driver a new pizza when he returned to take it back to the man. However, this did not satisfy him. Over the span of a couple of hours, the man called two more times, insisting that the pizza was way too spicy and he couldn't eat it. We kept bringing him new pizzas, but this time we were taking back the old ones for quality checks, when in reality, we were just tossing them in the dumpster, hoping that this guy would give up his scam. Finally, it was around 11 p.m., with just one hour left until closing. The man called again, saying he couldn't eat his pizza and needed a new one. At this point, 
We all started suspecting that something was seriously wrong with this guy, and no one wanted to go out there in the middle of the night to confront him. So the manager informed him that, unfortunately, we couldn't appease him. However, if he came down to the store tomorrow, we would be happy to issue him a refund, and we thought that would be the end of it. I wasn't closing that night, so I was at the front register cashing out when a beat-up truck screeched into the parking lot and parked right at the front door. A rather disheveled and overweight man came in holding a pizza. He placed the pizza on the counter and informed me that he was here for his refund. I called the manager, and as I was still up front calculating my cash for the night, he opened up the box and started talking to me. Dude, this pizza is so spicy. You gotta try this shit. It's unreal. Someone must have been putting chili peppers in the sauce or some shit. I just awkwardly let him know I believed him and moved out of the way so the manager could issue the refund. As this was happening, the man became more agitated. He pushed his pizza toward the manager and kept saying, Man, you gotta try this pizza. You gotta try it. You gotta believe me. It's so spicy. He jabbed his pointer finger into the pizza, mashing it into a disgusting mess. My manager kept telling him it was fine. He believed him, but the man was insistent and kept shoving the pizza toward the manager. Finally, the manager told him, No, I do not want to eat that pizza, and now I need to ask you to leave. The man then took his pizza and walked out. During all this, the waitress, cook, and other two drivers came up to the front to see what all the yelling about spicy pizza was about, and the other driver, who I had a bit of a crush on, was standing next to me. Once the man got into his truck and started to pull away, I turned to him and said, Hey Kevin, wanna try my pizza? Everyone burst out laughing. Our laughter was short-lived though, as the truck screeched to a halt and zoomed back into the parking space. Now, the agitated man was storming back into the store, seriously pissed off, and he was out for blood. He began screaming at my fellow driver. Do you think something is fucking funny? Am I funny? Are you fucking laughing at me? You think this pizza bullshit is fucking funny? Everyone was dead silent as my fellow driver sputtered, trying to get a word in. But the man wasn't having it. He climbed onto the counter and started yelling, I'll teach you to laugh at me. Let's fucking go outside. Right now, I'll fucking teach you. For context, this man had to be about 50 years old, while my now boyfriend Kevin was 22 and spindly thin. It was frightening as heck. My manager managed to coax the man off the counter and get him outside, then instantly locked the door. The man yelled at the door for a few seconds before retreating to his truck and driving away. So we thought that was the end of it until the truck began circling the building, and there was a gun being pointed out of the driver's window. Everyone immediately dropped to the floor. The waitress started sobbing, and my manager blindly reached up trying to grab the phone off the counter to call 911. Every once in a while, we peeked up, and this insane guy was still circling. When he finally stopped, everyone crept to the back of the store and peered out the window. The guy had parked next to the driver's cars, waiting for one of us to come out on a delivery. Nope. The guy stuck around for about 15 minutes before taking off. The police, of course, didn't show up until about an hour later, because it's Tucson, and they're not very prompt. I had to sneak out before they arrived, hoping I wouldn't get shot. The next day, the man started repeatedly calling the store to scream at people claiming we attacked him and threw crushed red peppers in his eyes. Since we had his address and phone number in the system, the cops finally picked him up, and we didn't hear from him again. He also earned himself a nice spot on the Do Not Deliver list. I deliver pizza, and I'd been having a really busy night, non-stop back and forth, without any time to even pause and take a leak. I'd been so busy that I wasn't really thinking about bathroom breaks, but we're also going through a bit of a heat wave in our area, so I've been drinking copious amounts of water, 
all of a sudden, as I was driving to this particular delivery, the urge to go hit me. Like, things went from zero to 60 in an instant. Thankfully, I was close to the customer, so I could get this one over with quickly. Or so I thought. I pulled up to the house, and it was an area I'd delivered to before, so I could immediately see that something wasn't right. All the lights were off in the house, not even the glow of a television or anything. It was extra apparent because the street light closest to the door happened to be out of order. On top of it all, the block was dead quiet. This is a big university area, and obviously there aren't many student renters in July, but there had to be at least one person, because someone ordered this pizza. Maybe they just liked sitting in the dark, or they were out back in the yard, whatever. I just didn't want to get out of my car and knock on a quiet house in the middle of the night, around 9.30 p.m., without first checking that I had the correct address, and the customer was inside. It was scorching that night, even after sundown. My car's air conditioner is a joke, and the piping hot pizzas don't help things much, so I have to try and open the car door as infrequently as possible to keep any cool air in. I called the number the customer provided, and the voice on the other end said, kind of brusquely and out of breath. Yeah? I just tried to keep it clear and concise. Hey, it's your pizza out front, but there doesn't appear to be anybody home, the customer replied, still gasping for air. Yeah, I'm not home. By that point, I had to pee so badly that I was much less patient than I'd otherwise be with a customer right out of the gate. Well, then we're going to have to terminate the order because I've arrived in the stated delivery window, and you were supposed to pay in cash, so I don't know what to tell you. Plan ahead next time. I instantly regretted letting my bladder do the talking for me, as the voice on the other end came through more clearly as a young, bubbly, and very distraught girl who couldn't have been older than 20 or 25. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I was running down the street so I could barely hear you, she cried. I just switched you out of my AirPods. Is that better? Sorry, I completely lost track of time at work, but I knew you were coming. That's why I'm literally running home right now. Please don't leave. I'm starving, and I don't have a car. Seriously, please don't leave. Five minutes tops, okay? I know what it's like to be hungry and running late, and have no car but not live near any restaurants. Plus, when I heard her voice, I began to remember more specifically having delivered to this place a couple of times before, and she'd always been perfectly nice. Now I felt bad for snapping at her. I tried to walk it back, while simultaneously looking out my window for potential spots to pee. No, no, my bad. I'm letting the heat get to me, and it's not your fault. No need to rush. See you when you get here. I hung up and, while surveilling the street, was starting to think I was really out of luck. All the other houses had people in them and were close together, so there were no clumps of trees or out-of-the-way patches of land or anything. Of course, I had just tossed my empty water bottle at the last delivery because I'm an idiot. Finally, I decided it was escalating to the point of an emergency, and the safest bet was to use a bush in front of the woman's house. She wasn't home. The streetlight was out, so no one would see me. The people who were home were inside. My car was parked across the street, and we're a small shop who don't wear uniforms, so if someone did spot me, they'd have no way to connect me to my employer. Animals pee outside all the time. Humans are animals? This is fine. I scurried over to the tallest bush in her front yard. She didn't really have much of a yard, more just a walkway lined with bushes and flowers that ran adjacent to her front door. The biggest cluster of bushes, the only one where I could be sure there would be no visible splatter on the side of the house, was about four feet from her door. I looked both ways, unzipped, and let fly. After the initial millisecond of relief, I noticed the sound was way off, more like pissing on something solid than something leafy. I started panicking, thinking I'd aimed wrong, but once I start, I can't stop midstream, so I kept squinting into the darkness to see if maybe I was hitting a key rock or something and could just move a few inches over. Instead, all of a sudden, I heard a way more concerning noise, a deep voice exclaiming, what the fuck? Before I could turn around, assuming I'd been caught by a neighbor, 
a man came leaping out of the bushes. He blew by me, brushing my golden shower off him as he did. He spat pretty emphatically on the ground, so I think I might have beamed him right in the face. I didn't see where he went after a few paces, but, though this next part is kind of a blur, I do think I remember hearing a car screech out from a bit further away after a minute. By that point, I was in such shock that I didn't even put my dick away. I just stood there trying to figure out what had happened. The reality was so terrifying that my mind refused to accept it and impulsively searched for a reasonable explanation that could make everything okay. I thought, could these bushes lead to some backyard area and just look like they were against the house? Could they have been obscuring an open window? My inner voice was desperately screaming. Bruh, that man was wearing a hoodie in 90 degree weather. That was a bad man. You're in a bad situation. But the very idea that I was within inches of a guy who would be hiding in bushes at all, let alone in front of a young woman's house at night, just wasn't something I was ready to grapple with yet. I was coping by not coping. My fight or flight response totally failed me at that point, because my dumbass did the absolute last thing I should have done. I approached the bushes to try and validate this. There must have been a good reason for a man in a hoodie to be behind these bushes in the middle of the night theory. So, I walked over to the side, turned on my phone flashlight, and tried to peer around the line of shrubbery. Pro tip, as scary as things may look in the dark, seeing them with a single beam of your flashlight can sometimes make it even worse. That's when I saw the bag. There was a tattered drawstring bag sitting behind the bushes, slightly splashed with pee. But I was in such a moronic daze from shock that I groped around for it, thinking, see? This is it. This will explain why he was back here. It explained it. Once I maneuvered it over and pulled it open, I saw a sharp knife, a roll of duct tape, and a bottle of pills. The delusions officially broke at that point, and all the adrenaline, endorphins, and self-preservation instincts that had been suppressed kicked in ten times over. I became whatever the opposite of dazed is. More laser-focused than I have ever been in my life, with one singular goal, get back to my car. I dropped the bag, booked it across the street, got in my car, and slammed the pedal to the floor before the door was even all the way closed. I went as far as I could as fast as I could until I hit a red signal. Then I pulled off to the side and realized I shouldn't be driving any more than necessary in the condition I was in. I pulled into the parking lot of a 24-hour drugstore and took a breath. I was finally calm and coherent enough to zip up and formulate a plan of action. My first lucid thought was, who do I call first, the police or the girl whose house that was? I thought about it for what couldn't have really been more than 10 seconds but felt like an hour and decided, okay, I am in my locked car with the engine running. If trouble starts, I can drive away. I know something's up, she might not. She needs to know not to keep walking in that direction. But as I was dialing her number, it occurred to me, what if there was no girl? I thought I remembered delivering to that house before, but what if I was wrong? What if the girl on the phone was just a decoy to get me there to rob me, or worse? Every pizza guy on the planet has seen the evil genius documentary by now, so I thought, she called me all out of breath. She wasn't home. The whole thing was off. Can't risk it. I'll start with the cops. I called 911. The operator was very helpful in keeping me calm because I was a complete wreck by this point. He kept assuring me that someone would be there soon. I kept telling them they had to get there before the girl did, but I was trying to express three thoughts at once and really damaging my own credibility. It came out more as, You've got to save this girl because he wasn't after me. I was just delivering a pizza. Unless they were after me, in which case there might not be a girl. But I talked to one on the phone. So then you should find that girl because they used her to lure me there. But if she's real, she doesn't know about the guy who was also real. And there could be more guys if there's actually a girl. And you know what? Even if there isn't a girl, there might actually be more guys. 
I only checked one part of the bushes, so I don't actually know. But we'll know which guy is the one I saw because I pissed all over him, you know. I didn't mean to. This was back when I thought the girl was real, but not home. But she might be real. So you really need to find her if she is. Because the guy was real. Finally, they basically just asked me to stop talking and stay on the line. But that was when I saw an incoming call from the customer. I couldn't answer it without disrupting my 911 call, so I just ignored it. But then she sent me this text like, Hey, I'm here. Don't see you. I told 911 she was there, and they said officers were only minutes away. But who knows how long that meant, especially after I'd given such a scattered account of the events in my panic. I just felt overwhelmed with guilt, because my rational mind said the odds of her being a decoy girl for some large scam targeting pizza guys were low, and the odds of her being the intended victim of a predator were high. So I put my 911 call on mute, where I can hear them but they can't hear me, and turned back, heart absolutely pounding out of my chest. Then I took 911 off mute and told them I had returned to look for the girl. They weren't happy about that, but I saw her meandering past the parked cars in the street looking to see if one was mine, and I waved her down, flashing my brights. She bounced on over to the window of my car, happy-go-lucky. I figured that was a good sign that she wasn't in on whatever this was, but I was just so scared to be back in the general area and to not know what had just happened or what was going to happen. I kept whispering, get in, get in, and she was like, get it? Huh? Oh, you want me to get the pizza from the back? I didn't want to make the same mistake with her that I had made with 911, so instead of trying to tell the whole story, I stuck to the bare basic facts. There was a man in your bushes. I'm on the phone with the police. I don't know where he is right now. Please get in the car so we can lock the doors. I was barely able to get even those sentences out, and I was shaking like I'd had 10 cups of black coffee. I held up my phone with the cops on the call screen to verify it for her. I thought that was why she got in the car with no further explanation, but it turns out that wasn't entirely it. You still there? Is she with you? Are you safe? Is anyone else there? 911 kept checking in, not knowing who the third party I was talking to was. I reassured them, and we drove, more cautiously this time, to a location 911 instructed us to wait at to speak with police after they cleared the area. I didn't actually have to do much after that. A police car met us, I gave a statement telling them everything I observed, and she went to go speak to more officers in more detail than they needed me for. It turns out the reason she got right into a strange pizza guy's car without probing any deeper into my story is that she knew who the man was right away from my description. She had an abusive ex-boyfriend who was apparently psychotic enough that he immediately came to mind from hearing, there's a guy in your bushes. She later called us to thank me and insist on leaving a huge tip. I wasn't there when the call came in, so the kid who answered didn't know to refuse to accept the money. But the manager already promised the next time we see her, we can load her up with enough one free pie cards to last a lifetime. Easily the scariest thing that has ever happened to me, on the job or off. I don't get the chance to tell the story much because I try to avoid sharing it with anyone who could possibly know the girl or know of the event, but I'm still not the same since. Even though I know he didn't even have anything to do with me directly, this truly shook me to my core.